Hey guys, welcome to Maybe Rose. My name is Rose Marie, and today we're going to be talking about relationships. As we know, we were created by God to be relational amongst many other things. So today I wanted to share like a personal testimony and hopefully this will bless you or it may just save you from making a mistake when a guy says, you're my wife. So my personal story in terms of being told by a guy that claimed to be Christian, I say that because at the time it seemed as though he was following the faith but you know that scripture about by their fruits you shall know them so definitely pay attention to actions more than words and I feel like as females we can often fall for the words because we're more emotional if we compare ourselves to men Uh, men can be logical we can be more emotional and I feel like when we come to Christ the Holy Spirit helps us to get our emotions in check so relying on his word and having a relationship with him where he just fully supports us as our husband like he, he has a covenantal relationship with us and he throughout the bible relates to us as his bride so thinking about the kind of intimacy that happens in marriage is kind of personified in the way that that is spoken to us in his word and it just shows the level of intimacy that he would love to have with us and I hope that your personal relationship with Christ are on fire and that you are kind of taking your quiet time with him seriously reading your word because it just reminds you of when Jesus said to his disciples that I'm eating food that you don't know about we need the word because it's fuel for us and the bible says it's a lamp unto our feet and a light light unto our path so the word of god is so needed so there was this time 2017 where i started to notice that there was a lot of things on social media and things like that and people saying there was this whole trend i guess it's probably still going on now but I noticed it back then and that's where I felt like oh maybe this would work for me but I was wrong but you know what I'm thankful because I've learned so much from that experience that I didn't know before and there was this whole trend of like you know get yourself out there you know or maybe you're still single because of this get yourself out there meet people go to these singles events and I think it's good to be social but you just have to be intentional and just pray about things because we can't be we can't afford to be following crowds everyone's in a different season so we have to listen and hear what God is saying so when it comes to dating or being a courting or being in a relationship leading to marriage I really think that you should only get in a relationship if you're intending to get married to that person just to clear that up so I met this guy and one of the mistakes I made was that I didn't I took for granted that people come into your life in seasons for a reason and it's your responsibility to find out why they've come in your life so at the time I was just like he came into my life for us to do business but I did not keep my boundaries and I allowed that relationship to become something that it wasn't ever supposed to be um and I know he came into my life to do business because he was helping me out with my business like when I was kind of like a year in it and I wasn't really too sure what to do so when he was helping me I was like oh this guy is really helping me like this must be for me right so he would help me and I met him through a friend so the, the main reason that he came in my life was because of business and um just creating something for me to do with my business so that's the main reason why he came in my life but um i think it's a major red flag when someone says to you you are my wife just because i feel that if that man is not sensitive to the fact that you are more emotional and that he if he's not sensitive to the fact that you need to be confident and not really when he says that it's like he's not really giving you a chance to go back to God and actually find out for yourself there's one thing when a man comes to you and says you know what like I really like you and I felt led to speak to you because we have to be really intentional 
And one of the questions I definitely would challenge you to ask someone that shows an interest is, well, have you asked God before you've come to me? Like, have you actually spent time in prayer? Because I don't really believe in like just going for things without seeking the face of God. Like, I know some people might think differently, but I really think that we should always go back to God and try and look for a confirmation. And it's through my experiences that I've realized that like dating around and trying to like seek and find the right person is a waste of time. I've realized that leaning on the Lord for his answer and for his confirmation is the best thing. So when that man is telling you that, you know, he just comes to you or you go on your first day and he's, he was, and he's rushing you. I feel like that's a really bad sign. And that was part of my experience. It felt like there was this push and there was this, you know, I want to get in a relationship with you, but I need to know, like, you know, let me know, um, if you're interested. Um, there wasn't really the conversation about, you know, okay, pray about it. Let's both pray about it and see what God is saying. So I would really advise against just not rushing into things because if a man is rushing into a relationship with you, perhaps he, you have to think about whether he's running away from something because Jesus is gentle with us and you, you have to think about a man that has a Christ-like spirit and by his fruits you'll definitely know him. Jesus doesn't force us to get into a relationship with him. He gives us free will. Um, so if you feel like you're being pressured into something, it's just not a good sign. So there was definitely red flags from the beginning that I was quite inexperienced to, um, just pay attention to. And I feel like as well, cause I hadn't dated for a few years and I was dating as a Christian, like, a, uh, you know, when I, after I rededicated my life to Christ, I was dating as, a, okay, I'm looking to find and see if I can meet my husband. But then my control was in it and my heart really wasn't leaning on the Lord. My heart was to then get in a relationship and then seek to see whether that was for me. And for me, I won't be doing that again. The only way I'm going to get into an actual relationship is if I know that this is the person that God has for me because anything else just it's just a emotional roller coaster and a waste of time. And there were a lot of promises, a lot of talk, but no action with this individual guy. Um, I remember at, at the very beginning, he lied to me about something quite major, and I think it definitely was God, um, and that was definitely my opportunity to leave the relationship because he lied to me about something major and admitted it, I think it was like a day or two later, and I was really angry and annoyed with him. This would have been a great time to leave the relationship, but I decided to forgive and stay in a relationship. Now, this is red flag number two. So if you're being, if the person is lying to you, um, it's just really not a good sign. I was supposed to come into things honestly, being Christ-like and being open and honest about circumstances, situations and things, giving the, ch the person a fair opportunity to be able to decide for themselves whether this is a relationship that they would like to get into. So if someone's just telling lies at the beginning, I, I really felt like I was being messed with. I felt like the person was playing games with my head because they were very up and down and it just shows an insecure person um, it shows someone that hasn't anchored themselves fully in Christ because if that person is really intentional about wanting to be in a relationship with you sis then he will seek the face of God and he will be very Christ-like about the way that he approaches you it doesn't mean that it's going to be perfect but it means that you'll be able to see the Ephesians 5 husband come to life in his interactions with you the respect he'll have for you the way he will approach you and the way he'll treat you will mirror the Ephesians 5 man and I failed to really just like study the scriptures and really just like line it up against this individual I failed to walk away on at the early stages because this was actually the first um guy that approached me since I had rededicated my life to Christ and um when I say that I mean that there were a lot of worldly guys I kept attracting and I just felt like, well, I'm kind of living my, right, I'm doing my best, Lord, but I'm not really getting the type of guy that, you know, I would like to marry. So he was like the first kind of Christian guy that had approached me. So I thought, well, this has to be it. And another mistake I made as well is like, sometimes it's a good thing that there's like encouragement out there, 
that like other fellow Christian ladies have shared their story. But at the same time, I actually was comparing my um, personal story to other people. In my head, I was thinking, oh, this just reminds me of so-and-so story when they said that they were single and celibate, they were following the Lord, but then they met their husband. And I think that telling someone that, you know, oh, God said that you were meant for me, I don't think it's appropriate in the beginning stages because you just have to really make open your the person should understand that you would want to really be sensitive to what the holy spirit is telling you and you don't want to have any extra talk that's going to cloud your emotions or cloud your judgment and this is why it's really good to be celibate until marriage as well because all that stuff that you mess with is just going to cloud your emotions and make you see this person different and i realized as well that even though i was in a relationship where i was not having sex with a person my judgment was still clouded because of that close proximity, always talking to them and feeling like that they were interested in me because they called a lot. They had a lot to say, like this person even like wrote down like a list of things that he wants in a marriage, the things that he wants for his children once married. Um, wrote down a list of like foundational things like you know this is our foundational scripture we believe in giving this is how we're going to raise our children you know we proper wrote took the time to write things down and things like that were making me feel like okay this is I've never seen anyone as serious as this before you know proper doing spreadsheets and things like that so I was thinking okay this is something that I haven't seen before but Sometimes in life, people do things when it's convenient for them, but then when there's life changes, you start to see a difference. And sometimes people are only doing things based on their own insecurities. You know, they're doing things to make them feel good at a particular season. But later on, you may see that it's not what you thought it was. And also, um, if someone is acting, eventually they'll show their true face, they'll show their true colours and they'll get tired of doing certain things. You'll start to see that the things they say